So this is a FLIR camera, so you should be able to see yeah, me in there, right? Boats. So, I mean, then you're that, familiar that's with That's for it. hot stuff, usually, but cold stuff, too, yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. I actually have it set up to, you can see the little blue dot that's bouncing around there, kind of like yeah. on the windowsill. It's actually looking, looking for the coldest spot in the frame at that particular moment. Now, okay. you should be able to see me, red, orange, and yellow. That means I'm the warm thing in the picture right now. So we're looking for blue and black to either take shape on its own or to start moving on its own. So obviously we can see that the windowsill over there is the coldest thing in the frame, but it's not moving. So again, am I looking, you know, specifically at that? Not necessarily because I can see that it's a windowsill, but I am looking for things that are going to take shape in the form of people. So that's normally what we'll find on a camera like this. They're people that are not in front of us, but we can see them through this because they are completely blue or black or a mixture of both. Right, exactly. So um, this is a two laps and kind of see what's going on with either spirit box and the emf reader um, is it going up no point three oh, yeah, we got the word business already <laughs> it's very vague but we do have the word business so you can see it. It. like a 32 just a little bit ago Where at? right there just above the is it too high is that where i'm hitting that's right the there sky. that's just guys so yeah, i gotta keep go it down to the there sky. Yep. got it from time to time am i doing mine oh yours is a full-on experiment but you must have hit something on the front so let me just say Oh. Yeah, you changed the way it measures. Oh. So I don't like using units of Tesla. I like using the uh, uh, the milligauss just because that's the same thing that's on the little device I just put back in my bag earlier. Okay. That way we have. You know what? I think I did press one of those when I missed trip. Yeah. You're okay. I have it set as a. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So the reason why I was asking for Sawyer for names is because people used to live down here. I have the full list of residents of every single person that's ever lived down here, and the two names... Down are, where? In this in his alley. These two buildings weren't here. So these buildings are, are after 1900. So these people live down here in the 1800s. Now, the, the people that I normally hear the names of are the same two names commonly. Benjamin and John. They hear Ben Frank. Uh -huh. So, again, that's why I got a little excited. Because we actually... This, is, this one works on a loop. So this is what we call a residual ghost. This one actually just kind of cycles through. I get the same names from you guys every six to seven weeks. And I want to say we're on week six of that loop. Again, I haven't been down here in a few weeks to actually fully keep track of it. But the name Ben coming through, which means we're probably going to have another John that's going to come through either on his radio station sweeps that he's missing or something's going to show up on my word list. It's usually we normally get both of them at the same time. Now, the interesting thing is, is the only thing I could tell you about why this is happening is based on where we're at. This location is basically inside the original Charlestown walls. When we cross that last crosswalk coming down East Bay Street, yep. that's where the original walls used to be. No more of the walls. I forgot about that. That was, uh, was it a... The fortification. Fort, a fort, basically? Yeah. Just yeah. to fortify the city and keep it safe. Yep. So this street is one of the first streets we ever had. So when I say people live down here, it's only like two to five people at a time. And yeah. that residential list, it's not long. It, it's, it's like two and a half pages. So again, the names Benjamin and John show up often, and I know it's specifically one of the Johns because there were four that lived down here. He keeps giving us his last name in the same evening, so his last name was Johnson. So we'll get Ben, John, and Johnson all in the same evening. So again, just depends on how things are working out for us. But these bricks we're standing on, these are Belgian blocks. These things are made out of complete granite. They're, you know, they're some people call them cobblestones. To me, they're Belgian blocks because I had to deep dive into them. We're dealing with the stone tape theory in this location. What that basically means is that these rocks have been here since 1739 that we know of. Wow. Again, the historians don't even know for certain. But any stone that's natural, like granite, is said to hang on to the memories of the things that occurred in that space and then repeat it back to us. And with our electronics and technology today, it is said that we can be able to pick up on it with what we're able to use with our technology. Now, again, I can't make up the fact that I keep getting the same names when I don't tell them what the names are, Benjamin and John on the way down here every six to seven weeks. So again, I was very excited when he told me Ben Frank. So I know we all think of Ben Franklin. I'm looking at just the Ben portion of it. That's where I'm excited. So the stone tape theory hasn't been fully proven yet. It's been studied for a couple of hundred years now, but it is not one of those pieces where we can fully prove it. With your device, these bricks are not supposed to hold an electrical charge whatsoever. I literally want you to put your device on any brick you choose, and we're going to see if we can get a reading out of it higher than 2.5. Let's put it up against On that. any brick. Nope, literally set it on the ground. Oh, really? So up to 1.1 is natural from the earth. So we have a 2.3, 2.5. Two 
826 and it's holding. So just to make sure it's not coming from something in the walls over here, we're going to try somewhere else. Somebody choose a brick so it doesn't look like I'm staging anything. Which one's us? Perfect. 5-8. Oh. So 5-6. Five, so we went up to a 5-8. Like that's, that's a high reading for this location. This area. So that's actually exciting, plus the fact that he had the name Ben coming through. Like, he's probably missing out on things that he just doesn't realize what he's looking for, <laughs> which is perfectly fine. <laughs> this happens on a nightly basis. Like, they've never done this before. Yeah, so he when I hand out these beer boxes, they're like, it's all static. I'm like, no, it's not. I'll show you how to use it in the morning. Um, but again, it's, it's holding pretty steady at a 5.3. So do we want to try another brick just to kind of see yeah. if we can get any higher? Which brick do you want, yeah. Sus? I'll pick, uh, Put one I'll in pick the, that um, brick. Put this one in the shade. Three, five, three, four. Which one do you want to try, baby? Oh, maybe. Let's try over here. It's going down dramatically. Yeah. It's weird that it's I thought maybe one in the, in the light. Without the light? These guys don't like light. Ghosts don't like light. So maybe over here. Right? I'll put this in the corner right there. <laughs> right down the corner. Yeah, I like it. The closer you get to the building, yeah. though, yeah. the more likely you're going to You're going to get, bad, you get bad stuff, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it's not as so accurate. So pick a spot. You pick a spot, baby. Oh. Big yeah. Let's see if we can get higher than that 5.6. Yeah, we're about to the natural pool. So, I'll hand that back to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are they doing? Yeah, welcome to the weird group, everybody. <laughs> usually how this goes. The other weird thing about this location, now this is called Lodge Alley, and that's Lodge Alley Inn behind you. The reason why it's that's called Lodge That's the name Lodge, of that? Yeah. Right now it's yeah. The reason why it's called Lodge Alley is because this is where the Freemasons had their Masonic Lodge. So I want to say it was number three. I can't remember the exact number. I want to say it was two or three. Freemasons, um, you know what Freemason is? What? Freemasons? No. So, no. It's a, not a cult, but it's a group of, yeah. it's a cult pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people that are in it. I think we talked yeah. about this. Yeah. From the Bahamas, that guy. Yeah. So the weird thing. It's it religious. Like, is it religious? It's religious um, too. It has a religion base to it. However, there is no religious clergy that's assigned to it. Um, it is. I'll explain this. It's kind of like the government's book of secrets kind of mentality. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I remember talking and about And some this. of the presidents are in it. Yeah. Remember so in the, yeah. We were yeah. somewhere and we yeah. passed by we one of their buildings. Mm -hmm. Now, the things that we'll get around here, because this is the funny part. A lot of times when with these spirit boxes, as we're entering, before I even mention the Freemasons at all, the word Illuminati is heard on a spirit box. Illuminati? Mm-hmm. Oh, that, he was a big part of that, yeah, wasn't he? No, the Illuminati is a nickname for Okay, that's what, I know that's what they're doing. Yeah. Okay, got it. So the Illuminati, and that's a whole big conspiracy theory because it's yeah. a big secret club. Yeah. Um, that's a funny thing to hear on the radio, first off. And the second thing is, is I've only ever heard people hear that term as we're entering this space. So I can't make that stuff up either. It's just yeah. a funny thing to do. Now, Ooh. the other thing is the other terms we'll get are like founding fathers, because again, a lot of the original presidents were part of it. Washington was a Freemason. Like it's, it's a big deal. Um, so again, yeah. if you ever need a, a rabbit hole to jump into, you know, go ahead and dive yeah, into the I, Freemasons. Yeah. There's a lot that goes on there. Yeah. But that's another thing that we'll get at this location, other than just the names and dealing with the stone tape theory, trying to prove that it's actually going on in this location. I'm actually pretty excited about the ratings we got from the different bricks and the fact that he had the name Ben. Um, let me check my phone real quick before we move on to the next space. And kind of, again, this is a very brief stop. Oh, we have the word rock. Look at that. We're talking about granite. I mean, it's definitely a rock. So yeah. it's it's kind of a vague thing, but it's definitely part of what we're actually we're dealing talking with. About, yeah. So yeah. if he has the word granite or anything like that, stones coming through on his end that he's missing, again, we don't know what he's not hearing until I start going through the recording tomorrow morning. And you're like, damn it, quit saying I'm doing a bad job. <laughs> uh, I'm just doing a bad job. You've just never done this before. Again, it's not an easy task to do. Um, and because you didn't talk much at the beginning, I thought that that would actually get him to open up a little bit more about all the things Here's he's hearing. So. Here, you know. No John? <laughs> no, no. no John? We'll see if a John pops through. We want to hear a John, Brock. Yeah, anything coming through at all. 
no matter how silly you think it is. He's like, I'm going to tune everybody out. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to head up to another alley. Um, are you still recording in here, or did you stop? I, I think I stopped. I did stop. Okay. Oh, um, no, I'm recording. Okay. So you still can, been recording. Yeah, you Turn can up. continue going. Okay. Um, watch me. Uh, excuse us. Um, so we are going to be cutting through a stop. neighborhood to get to, to the next alley. Um, so when we exit this alley, go ahead and stop your recording. You'll be able to pop it back on once we get into the next one. Because, again, we don't record houses the same way we don't record people's cars. Okay. So same kind of mentality. Um, with your readings, just kind of keep an eye on it. If things go, like, really haywire, like, you might start to see, like, threes and fives when we're cutting through the neighborhood. Um, don't get too excited. But if it goes above a five, definitely let me know what you see. Okay. So, but yeah. So you're keeping... Want a light, baby? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Don't be that big. Okay, sorry. No, I didn't know that. Don't run away. Okay. Just like I have my light on in my room now. Oh, that it keeps them away? Yeah. I didn't know that. Look at this now when I go home. She better not come back. <laughs> now I'm talking all this smack. <laughs> I never see the ghost though. What? I never see the ghost though. I got it. Tell me how hot this thing's 52? actually getting. That thing right there? Yeah. That's pretty hot. How hot does it say? It says it'll go all the way up to 131. And 82? I have yeah. I think they're going back to Amazon. Mm -hmm. They're not very warm. 83? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, that's not that. Yeah. Like, this is not. No, 83 is not hot. <laughs> this is not what I'm no, no. Like, I wanted some heat. Yeah, exactly. You, know I mean? <laughs> you want steam coming off those. more coming out of them hot hands and carbon ones you were Yeah, the carbon ones, yeah, the smoke ones. Them in my those could get hot. Yeah, those I could love get real it. hot. Yeah. It gets cold down here in January. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah. This is cool. Tell the same story because this Philadelphia. I remember we saw yep. that. We saw that. Used to be called Alley. Dooler's Alley. Did you guys hear this on your carriage door already? No, we're on, we're looking on TripAdvisor. They said Philadelphia Alley was a cool spot to look at. This is, is actually one of the most picturesque places we yeah. have in all of all of the city. So mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite places to be honest with you, because huh. it's again okay, day or night, it's beautiful pictures. So this used to be called Dooler's Alley. This is where some of the duels used to take place for the city of Charleston. The what? Duels? Yeah. Like What's a duel? Take, like take 10 paces, Fighting? turn and shoot. Okay. Yeah, mm. kind of duels. So here's how this one goes down. And we kind of stay on this end because I've been kicked out of this alley, and I'll get to that in just a moment. And <laughs> you're like, man, what did oh. I sign up for? <laughs> when I was first starting this, we were only allowed in certain boundaries based on the residential areas. Mm. I didn't realize that the rules. end of this was residential at the end. So because there is a beautiful mansion at the end of this alley, I didn't realize... You're not supposed to be there at certain no, times. Exactly. After 6 o'clock. Okay. So um, that's why we always stick to the scent. But every ghost tour comes through here. Here's how the story goes. There's a doctor that moves down here from Philadelphia. Or from Philadelphia. Or in Philadelphia Alley. He didn't come from Philadelphia. He came from Rhode Island. So he comes down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiancée, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has an attorney helping her out with all of this cash flow that she just got from her dead parents. The attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money, so he tells Amanda, get rid of the doctor. So, Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd moves to Charleston to prove that he's not just after Amanda's money, and the coachman that brought him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a very good start to his stay here. Somebody was walking by. His name was Ralph Isaacs. He's seen what was about to happen. I stop on Ralph for just a second because Ralph has the same initials as where the doctor came from. 
Now, he has a spirit box, I'm using this, another one in my pocket, but I also have like a Ouija board device, it's electronic in my bag, and we do get the initials R.I. here all the time. So, Rhode Island, Ralph Isaacs. Again, it's a matter of perspective. With that being said, Ralph tells the doctor, you don't want to go in there, man. I know this guy. He's going to try to kill you, take all your money. I got some friends at 59 Church Street. 59 is often heard on a spirit box in this location, just so you know. Now, 59 Church Street, you can stay there and rent the room from friends of mine, and you'll be good to go. Dr. Ladd takes them up on the offer. They become friends. The longer the doctor stays down there, the more money he's making. Amanda gets wind of how much money he's making. She's proving the, he's proving the point that he wasn't after her money, and she's coming down soon so they can get married. Dr. Ladd becomes known as the Whistling Doctor. Mm -hmm. Every haunted city you're going to visit has a cliched whistling ghost, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get to the proof of ours here in just a minute. But Ralph and the doctor go see like plays together, but they cannot sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. He gets better seats. That's just kind of how. You're nine a lot. No, fifty-nine. Uh, I heard ninety-four. Ninety-four. It's not relevant to anything in my database for this location, but I'm going to write it down after I'm done. So again, there's things that I don't know. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything, ever, because <laughs> Google is large. <laughs> so, back to, uh, they go see Richard III and another walking home talking about these plays because they couldn't sit next to each other, and they're arguing over the new actress. Dr. Ladd thought she was fantastic, but Ralph, he didn't think so. So they start arguing, and then Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. It gets very ugly, they go their separate ways. Ralph has friends here. He goes to his friends at the newspaper and puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of mentality. Dr. Ladd sees the ad and rebuttals with, let's go to Dueler's Alley. We're going to settle this once and for all. So they came down, they took their ten paces, they turned, the doctor pointed his gun in the air, and he shot. He didn't want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage and bravery to show up to the fight, which is often what happened at a duel. But Ralph, he has his one shot, and he puts it in the kneecap the doctor and he proves his point that he's still ticked off and he's not willing to forgive dr ladd doesn't die his friends carry him home to 59 church street where he dies 10 or four days later depending on which version of the story that you're reading the interesting thing is, is that he refused medical treatment during his time at home he's a doctor he probably tried to bleed out the bullet himself so the ghost campfire marshmallows type part of the story is as you're walking through the alley you can hear the whistles from the doctor we're using a voice recorder right now. So this is at that point when we enter the alley, when you guys are listening, you're going to be listening for faint whistles. If you're going to come down here on your own, which you guys said you're leaving tomorrow, um, turn on your voice recorders, walk through the alley, listen to it later. Keep in mind every local knows this story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland Street or Queen Street is going to throw a whistle down the alley. I do it every single night. I'm not going to lie. You so whistle down the alley? Every single night. I have My garage is right there. I pass the alley because we're going to end over here shortly and I have to pass it. So I always throw a whistle down the alley just to throw mm -hmm. off all the other tours. Because remember, I've been kicked out of here. <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> That's the fun part. So I used to take my people all the way through the alley, just like what we did with Lodge Alley. And I would always point out because those bricks down there are older than the bricks we're standing on. Those are sun-dried bricks from slave children. I don't care about the diversity of my group. We all need to see the bricks down there because there's a full handprint from a slave child at the end of it. Mm -hmm. And fingerprint swipes and other bricks. <laughs> now, my groups always wanted to stop and try to get a reading out of that one brick. And I, I treat it the same way I do a grave. That kid is not staring at that brick in the afterlife. So November 26th of 2020, my entire group of 10 huddled around the brick. I'm trying to shoo them along. You know, because it's outside the dining room window of a beautiful mansion. He came out, started yelling. My daughter thought it was great because dad's getting yelled at. <laughs> and we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving of that year, so I didn't have a tour. I worked in retail management for over 20 years. I'm never working another Thanksgiving ever. The next day after that, I got a phone call from the tourism office asking me to go down halfway, like what we're allowed to do, or to reroute my group. Well, I didn't think it was fair for my groups of 10 to try to investigate, spread out, around 20 to 60 other people. So I decided I'm going to reroute my group, and I told them, guys, I don't even believe in this story, but we're going to see what happens anyway. I'm kind of winging it because it was a rush phone call. I did not tell them what we were going to be investigating other than piracy. If you're in Charleston, you got to hear about some kind of pirates, which I'm a vampire guy. Pirates were not my thing. So before we left, somebody heard the name Anne on a spirit box. I did not tell them that we were going to be investigating the female pirate Anne Bonnie. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And I will tell you that we got the word female the minute we entered here on my word list. I just thought that was weird because we're getting close. It's almost like she knows we're coming. 
So we get down there, and I told them what I did know about piracy, which again wasn't much. And they, somebody else heard the number 300. I'm like, I don't know what that means until I start doing the research the next day. We were there on November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300 year anniversary of her pirate trial. So, since that date, I've been taking people back up there in hopes that we're going to continue to find more. And I've read more damn books on piracy than I ever wanted to in my entire lifetime. Because trying to piece together a factual investigation on pirate lore is very difficult. I, I hate to say be grateful I have a master's degree in creative writing, but be grateful. It's very difficult to read all of those books and try to piece it all together. Everything we're going to discuss at the next location came from a minimum of two resources. So, again, it's one of those pieces where we never know what it's going to happen. It, it's usually a hit or a miss. We either have a lot or we have nothing. It's just one of those spaces. So, anything weird coming up on your end? Nothing at all. Any numbers showing up on your end? No. Mm -mm. Okay. And were you recording in here? Hopefully, yep. yes. Yep. All right. Been recording the whole time. Good deal. Um, so, let me check the word list real quick, and then we will actually head up to got the name Mia. Supposed death. Wow, there's quite a few words I showed up here. Death, female, supposed, and Mia. I don't know who Mia is. Oh, by the way, the gate behind me, this was an interesting little Charles Charleston cool. fact. Um, okay. Well, the gate yeah, is actually the early 1900s, but the doorway is not. The doorway is original. Remember that the alley didn't come all the way through, like I mentioned? This was a shortcut to get to the cemetery on the other side. Mm. Otherwise, they'd have to carry the dead body from the duel all the way down to Queen Street and down and around before they could go celebrate the winner. So... The Rod Iron Gate wasn't always here, but the property line for mm -hmm. between Philadelphia and St. Philip's Church, this is where the line is drawn. So the Rod Iron Gate was probably put up in the early 1900s, based on the ironwork that I see. Mm -hmm. So, let's go around the corner. Let's go see what's going on up there. Let's continue listening in. You haven't heard much out of that. Uh, <laughs> <anyway. laughs> 3.1 or so. Huh? You think that we're 5 now? Hmm? Well, I just saw 3.1. But not when I'm walking, though. Oh, you can't do it when you're walking? No. Okay. You sure? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I think you're supposed to say something if it gets hot. If it's hot? If it gets hot. It's not hot. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got the cool one. You got the cool thing, haven't I? You think so? <laughs> That's good. Really? That's going to feel good tonight. The bed going, no doubt. Yeah. Nice and toasty. Yep. Sorry, I saw something. You had to like stop to do that? <laughs> yeah, I did. Why? I saw 30. You know, I hear like these things. These, these things are cold. These things right there. I don't think I... Mine doesn't shit on me. Huh? I haven't seen anything on mine. You think so? You can feel yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah. You're trying that now. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, they're doing it too. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's good. What's that? He's good, huh? Which this one? Guy, this oh, guy's yeah. good. Oh, yeah. He has colitis. It's just like um, friend disease. Yeah. Very similar. You know how, how painful a kidney stone is? Oh, I know. It's oh, brutal, I heard right? people I heard pass it's awful. Out. Yeah, it's like a thing goes right through your tanker. Yeah. Whew. It's like got barbs <laughs> on it and stuff. <laughs> oh, he whistled. <laughs> Sorry. He whistled. I figured with him. Yeah, I was just talking about something. So, just taking advantage of the fact that there's no tours up here right now, and it, we're a small group, so I um, figured this wouldn't be too bad of an extra little stop. There's a sign right here that every ghost tour comes up here and shows every all their tours, and it's usually the last big finale. The sign reads, there's no ghost here but the Holy Ghost. <laughs> there's a reason for it. So I'd like to point out first off that there's two different sides to the cemetery. So this side is for native Charlestonians only. That is for everybody else. 
So your seventh vice president, John Calhoun, is actually on that side. They actually shuffled him back and forth. He's in a sarcophagus. That was when I was coming back and forth. We heard yeah. about that. And, yeah, I'm sure they oh, right. mentioned that yeah. on the character. Like six years he came back and forth or uh, something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. He was kind of disturbing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like moving like, him, like yeah. back and forth. But he's in a sarcophagus. So it's literally just put, you know, eight guys around it, pick him up, shuffle him across I know, but still. Mm-hmm. I know. It's not like they <laughs> dug him Jeez. up and turned him into another place. Yeah. You know, it's, it is just. Right. Like, it was in. He's being like passed around now. Yeah. And you can actually visit that site during the daytime, so you can actually see how big it is. But the reason why this sign is here is because in 1888, a young lady died by the name of Sue Howard Hardy. Now, we did talk about initials over there with Ralph Isaacs. Sue Howard Hardy's initials, it's very cheesy, very campy, and I hate it, but it does occur. Shh, Sue Howard Hardy. So SHH has shown up on the word list, and we've heard it on different types of spirit boxes and the Ouija board device. So it's been on multiple devices. But anyway, she dies six days after her stillborn child. It's a very sad story. All the other ghost tours make it very big yeah. and elaborate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's exactly a lot of static. what he's been listening to all night. Is yeah, that high really? static? What? Is that annoying? Uh, you get anything out of it? No. It can be Thought very annoying quick. if you've never done it before. And again, I listen to him every morning, so <laughs> I'm used to it. Um, but anyway. 1987, a local photographer is taking pictures of all of our cemeteries. He's putting a book together, and he does capture an apparition over Sue's grave. Now, that apparition, it's 1987, so he doesn't have the technology that we have today to try to figure out what's going on. You know what an apparition is? He's going about to find out. Yeah. I'm going to show him one. Okay, yeah. So, But he sends it to Kodak to try to figure out what's going on with this photograph. Kodak doesn't know what to do with this photograph either, other than authenticate it that it came from the camera that he said it did and that it wasn't tampered with. So for guys like me, the picture is gold. However, what most other tours won't tell you is that the picture is cursed to females. Females that handle it, even in a digital format, are said to get the same <laughs> symptoms we talked about at the beginning. So the headache, the nausea, the dizziness. Mm. In the event that well, something pops that. up as evidence, and I have to give you a link to be able to verify that evidence, I will either put that this is warning, this has the cursed photo, or you know, this link does not contain the cursed photo. So that way you're not clicking it by accident. So I'm going to show you the photograph and then zoom in. I mean, we're a small group. You guys can actually see it. The only thing I'll ask is, Tina, don't touch the damn tablet. So <laughs> because, again, I'm, I'm the guy that I don't want somebody with a great vacation. And nine months later, I curse somebody's family. So this is the full picture that he took. Your apparition is right here. Yeah, so right. this is a woman praying over her own grave with a baby basket next to her. Oh. That good? Yes. Yeah, this is it. Now, this is probably another instance where the baby's probably buried with mom. I went through all the uh. church records trying to find records of the baby's birth and or death. They don't exist. So, again, being born stillborn, probably buried with mom because she did die six days later. So, um, again, 1888, I don't know what the funeral practices were. I'm sure it wasn't a three to four day turnaround. You know, they still had to, you know, make a stone or things like that. Yeah, I so, heard Anne. You heard Anne. Mm-hmm. He finally heard something. Again, <laughs> I love it. So, it's funny because somebody heard the name Anne Boleyn here last night um, when we were getting ready to discuss, you know, Anne Bonny, the female pirate. The and pirate, yeah. Yeah, She's Anne both. Boleyn was a queen. So, again, it was like, we'll take the Anne at this location because we had a lot of other clues that happened around there, too, to kind of verify it. So, um, just so you guys have a, a basic gist of where we're at, because across the street is where we're heading. That'll be our last stop. It's a big, elaborate pirate story. But when we do end and we part ways, you're going to go straight down here all the way to the end. It's like three blocks from here and make a right. To where John's Tavern is again. Yep. Yep. Got it. Again, you're like, I just wanted to give you a gist of where okay. you were because I know Thank I you. twisted you guys around a little yep. bit. Yeah, 
left, definitely let me know if you see any numbers in this location. Okay. Um, an average base for this, like we've seen in here, has been anywhere between three to five. The closer you get to those bushes, the closer you get to the parking meters. Oh, yeah. And that's normally where you start to see like the fives and sixes. We also have two electrical poles in the corners. So once I'm done going through the history and we're going to make a few laps around this place, we'll see if we want to go to the front and get some footage of the location. Um, you know, because this is we're going to be talking about this little tiny building right here. This is the gunpowder magazine. So first off, I'd like to point out, those are not crosses. They probably pointed out a few earthquake bolts on your carriage yeah. tour. Yes. Uh -huh. This is the first set of earthquake bolts that Charleston put in. What do the bolts do? So in a nutshell, think of a turnbuckle. Okay, it goes through the roof. Right. If there's an earthquake, it's supposed to, you turn the turnbuckles in it slowly each day, and it's supposed to tighten the building up to stop it from incurring further damage. It doesn't work. No. <laughs> Just, I mean, I'm, I'm watching your wheels You're spin. supposed to He's tighten thinking, it yeah. as... Yeah, earthquake's each going on or no? no after Just the earthquake, like it's gonna like rumble everything right. around, yeah. and the building so is it's gonna tighten be... everything back up. Right. Yeah. No. Okay. It's BS. It doesn't yeah. work. Got it. I talk to a lot of Californians; they laugh yeah. every time I bring this up. <laughs> yeah. like, again, it's just one of those pieces. Okay. But the reason why we're here is because of those earthquake bolts. These earthquake bolts were the what first set building? that they put in because this what? is the That's crazy building. I know. Oh, that building. Oh, the building is. I'm getting to it. That's part <laughs> yeah. of the other part of the reason why we're here. Yeah. Let me go over the quick architecture because you seem fascinated. Yeah. Um, yeah. This. We're, keep in mind, we're still inside the original Charlestown walls. Remember, we talked about those yeah. back at Lodge. This is where the wall was. Okay, so it came up Cumberland Street and it went up about half a block, going up to Meeting Street. So it's literally tucked into the corners on purpose. We're three blocks away from the water. If it gets attacked from a pirate ship or a revolutionary warship, it's too far for the cannonball to actually hit it. Let's pretend that it does. The walls are 32 inches thick, okay? We're gonna pretend that it goes all the way through the 32 inch thick walls. The gunpowder is gonna blow up and then there's sand underneath those red shingles that's designed to go up in the air with the explosion and fall to put out the fire of the gunpowder. It's on a uh, groin vaulted ceiling on top of that. So basically there's eight pillars around the edges of it and then one in the center and they all meet in the middle. Mm. It's a fascinating building. Mm. That sand in the roof bit, no, that doesn't work either. What no. is that one? What is that building? An apartment. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I've been living there. Yep. And then the cemetery is right there? Yep. Oh, geez. <laughs> and there's another historical building on the other side of the powder magazine. So. Yeah. No thanks. This is the <laughs> oldest. So what's in there now? Is it? It's a museum. It's a museum in that in that. Yeah, it actually shows you all the different wars that it served in. Um, so it served in seven different wars and one rebellion. So the, the uniforms and the artillery for that are inside here. So it's really cool. Hey, they, we could have gone there today. Things out. Mm -hmm. We didn't know. It's a nice, quick five buck ticket for thirty minutes to go yeah. see a crazy building and to get out of our heat or our cold, depending on what time of year you're here. <laughs> but those bolts were put in because this is the oldest government building we have in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. So that's the establishment date. But it did take 10 years to build. Does that sound like our government? 10 years, small building? No, not at all. Um, so <laughs> the Ann Bonny portion of this is because this building was being constructed at the same time that she was coming to the Charleston. February 17th. Ooh, that's very specific, isn't it? I don't know what that is, but I like it. When it comes out that direct, that's that's the yeah, stuff. That's I pretty look strong. For. Yeah. Well, how'd you hear it? Just came out through. I can was speaking like. Oh, oh, I just <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny. That girl was talking about it. February 17th. That means something. What's February well, I mean, it's 14th pretty Valentine's like he Day. said. Yeah, what's 17th? Oh, wow. You're thinking about Valentine's Day. Yeah. Valentine's Day is the 14th. That's what I said. I said it's oh, the 14th. Yeah. What's the 17th? I don't know. Huh. It's, I don't know. It's got to be relatable in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Nothing comes up that strong where it doesn't mean something. Like, that's very specific. Yeah. Oh, very much. Very specific. Very specific. <laughs> <laughs> very specific. Yeah. If it gets a year after that, I might actually have to shoot a brick myself and find out what the hell that means. But anyway, um, Ann Cormac, kind of follow me. There's a few twists in this little tale of piracy, so follow me if you can. 1708 is where the story begins. A young lady named Ann Cormac moves here from Ireland. She's with her father and his mistress. His mistress is Ann's mother. Are you with oh me so God. far? Wow, that's a little too close for comfort. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, it's, it's going to get even more twisted. Oh are you with me? They, those are her parents? Like, Sounds like West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The three of them are running away from her father's angry wife. So basically he had an affair, had an illegitimate child, she, mm. the wife found out, and they left Ireland to come here. Got it? Got it. Okay. I, I got yeah. it. Just want to make sure. I usually slow down on that because if I say no, it too fast, really people literally <laughs> like go, wait a minute. This one was with this one. Yeah. And, yeah. 
So they land in Georgetown, which is just north of here, between us and Myrtle Beach. Dad bought a plantation. Mom died pretty quickly. That means he's sending young Anne down here to sell anything from the plantation to keep things afloat. We are here because this is what we call a familiar ghost. It's like using a toy to attract a child ghost. It's the same type of principle. So, Anne back home in Ireland was kind of a badass. They say she killed one of her servants when she was like seven, eight, nine years old, remember we're dealing with pirate lore, with a knife to the belly. So again, knife and belly have shown up here quite a bit here, just so you know. Um, but anyway, fast forward, the building's done in 1713. Pirates are coming through Charleston in 1715. Anne is stoked. She's gonna fall in love and try to earn her freedom, just like a man. It's a man's world. And she does. Guy number one. Yes, I said number one. There's a handful. We're gonna go through them. Guy number one is James <laughs> Bonney. You already see where this one's going because I already mentioned Anne's married name, mm -hmm. Anne Bonney. Bonney. Dad didn't approve because he's a filthy pirate. They ran away to <laughs> Jamaica. They got married. We now have Anne Bonney. However, when they got down there, this guy was not the Captain Jack Sparrow that she was hoping for. Dude, you can have a seat right there if you want. <laughs> Like most, a lot of the time people go sit over there. Yeah. Um, but this guy's not the Captain Jack Sparrow. He's a spy. He's a privateer for the British. So this guy's a coward. So a few years later, she falls in love again. This guy's name is John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack. This is literally the character that they based your Captain Jack Sparrow character off of. Mm. So again, Johnny this... Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is who this guy is. Just picture him. He has his own ship and wants to be part of it. You can't put a girl on a pirate crew. Do you know why? They're bad luck. Yeah. So I was trying to keep it family friendly. Um, um, I do get a lot of weird answers to that, but I usually stop there to make sure everybody's still paying attention. And they're like, wait a minute, why? <laughs> so anyway, he makes a deal with her. If you dress like a guy and look like my crew, hide mm -hmm. your gender, you could be part of the ship, but you're going to be a female in my quarters. She's okay with this because dad used to cross-dress her as a boy back home in Ireland to hide her away from his wife. Wow. I told you, a lot of twists in this one. Yeah. So yeah. she's okay with this. Cross Crush, yeah. dressing back then. Oh, wow. you ought to hear, like, I, I read a lot of, like, the LGBTQ communities, like, blogs and stuff like yeah. that, and how they think of this story. Like, they thrive on they this love part. It, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they love yeah. it. Oh, yeah. So, We've been around a long time. But <laughs> let's put two and two together. She's being a female in his quarters. She's eventually going to get exactly. pregnant. Exactly. You can't have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's going to figure out that she's a girl. <laughs> so he drops her off in Cuba. Go have the baby here. These are friends of mine. They'll help you out. Come back later. We'll figure it out. She goes and has the baby, but returns with no baby. We have no idea what happened to the child. Mm. The significant part of that story is that she actually comes back dressed like a female. This makes Jack angry because now everybody's going to know that he led a girl on the crew. While she was gone giving birth to his baby, he captured another pirate crew. They're down below deck. Anne's going to go flirting with that crew to make Jack even more mad because that's who Anne is. Guy number three. <laughs> guy number three turns out to be a female dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack captured. <laughs> Her name is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. So we often get either name, Mary, Mark, or and the name Reed. So her and Mary become friends, possibly lovers. We don't really know for sure. But the British find out where they are and send a fleet of ships after their one pirate ship. Anne and Mary, rumor had it, were the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight with their one bullet flintlocks. Again, one bullet flintlocks are not going to take on a fleet of British ships. So... They're obviously getting arrested, and as they're being arrested, she looks at her captain, her beau, Calico Jack, and she says, You should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog. The word dog shows up on our spirit boxes a lot, by the way. The judge, his name is Nick as well, so if he hears my name, it's not me, it's the judge. The judge wants to see the two men that fought back so valiantly on their own after he's already tried and hung Calico Jack and the drunk pirates that wouldn't fight. The two ladies go in front. I told you there's a lot of twists here. The two ladies go in front, they guys. reveal their gender. Yeah. He doesn't care that they're female. They're still pirates in his eyes. He's still going to hang them. So yeah. they yeah. scream out, we plead our bellies, which means they're claiming to be pregnant. Right. You can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he says, fine, delay the hanging, go back to jail. Dad is still up here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money because he was an attorney back home. He bails out Anne, brings her back home. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four, because we're going to count Mary Reed. We don't really know. She has four kids and dies at the age of 84. Yeah, very abrupt, because we don't know much about her after her pirate career. Mary Reed died a year later in that Jamaican jail from whatever pirates die from in that Jamaican jail. So use your imagination to make it romantic for yourself. I'm sure it was very scurvious and nasty and gross. So the only two things that I left out on his end for the spirit boxes is the names of Anne Bonnie's parents, that's the father and his mistress, and the name of Calico Jack's ship. So 
those are the common things we normally get here. This is normally by this time when people have been working with me for two hours. They, they know how to use their devices, and I say it's a free-for-all, and they're pirates. You can ask them whatever the hell you want to. This is not a prominent English family. We don't have to be super, super duper respectful, but we're going to try to get some answers out of this. The interesting thing about your device, Tina, is I'm actually going to turn on the motion sensor at this point. And just to kind of give you another gist of actually how it works, um, we're going to be asking Ann Bonnie her hair color. And the only way for her to show us her hair color is to touch this antenna because her hair color is red. So we're going to hopefully get some kind of answer out of this. She's just like, I don't want to do that. You're going to do it and I'm going to videotape it. So I haven't looked at the word list in a while to kind of see where we're at. It's a little breezy tonight, which could be kicking up some dust. Yeah, I got nothing. I got Latin, but those are not... I'm trying to think. So like Jamaica, Cuba. Is that considered Latin America? Jamaica? No. no really, but I didn't it's, think so. It's Latin Caribbean. America? It's Caribbean. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not seeing anything else. I mean, we had the word female back in Philadelphia Alley. Have you heard anything since you were sitting over there? That's going to go back to you. Okay. That crazy beeping us. Oh. So we're going to make a few laps in here, kind of see what we get out of it. Again, this is a hit or miss. We're either going to have a lot or nothing. Hopefully it's not nothing, like what we had at the Pinkney Mansion site. So that motion is probably coming from you jostling it around a little bit, just so you don't get super excited. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, That's see how tough. you're kind of... <laughs> So there's a way to reset it. So right here on the right-hand side, you might not be able to feel it with your glove, but there's a uh, there's three buttons. That very bottom button, if you have stuff like that, you click it, and it'll stop it. Oh, okay. So yeah. you basically, you because it's picking up your motion too. Yeah. Right. Okay. So if something gets close to this, it's going to go off. All those little greens that you just had just now, I don't write those down. I wait for, like, the big ones. In this location, it's the reds, just because right. that's the only place I've ever gotten a direct red. Yeah. yeah. It's been, and it's been on, on command. Ooh. And what was funny was I was trying to get the answer of red out of one of those, and it showed up there. So I was kind of like, are you kidding me? So we changed spots, and we went to another location. Same three, three of us. Same question again. Same answer came up red in a whole different location. Hmm. So I was kind of like, okay, yeah. we got it. All right, let's take a few laps. You're gonna, you're the star of the show still. Let's see if you can get out of that thing. Yeah, keep hitting that button on the side. She's like, no, it looks cool on TikTok. I <laughs> <laughs> like Facebook. Yeah. Maybe red. red. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Let's sit. Try to keep it still. Reset it. And tell us, show us what color your hair was. Was it really red? It was red. Oh, yeah. Red. Oh, yeah. It was, was, it? it was like purpley red. Yeah. Oh, wow. And show us your hair color again. Oh. Are you hearing anything? Sometimes it'll come through on your end too. And show us your hair color. Oh, well, you're too close. <gasps> no, that's not there really. it goes. Click the reset again for me. Just to make sure. Click it again. Click on the bottom button. There. <laughs> what are you doing? actually be widening 
the Wait. the mode here. Let me check it out. It's hard with the gloves. Yeah. Like I'm... <sighs> yeah, you widened it up a little bit. Oops. It's okay. I try to keep it as small as possible so that way every little thing doesn't make it go off. Where's the button? The very bottom one, right there. Oh, right there, the bottom, yeah. Okay. Keep it like that. Yeah, so sometimes on cold nights like this, that device can get a little sensitive. So you want to try to keep it as still as possible. This thing is not designed to be walked around with, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. It's, it's actually hey, meant yeah. to... I can't... <laughs> it's like hard with yeah. that. It's funny, because we have a 4.2. You handed it back I to can't me. get it. I can find the button. And show us what color your hair was. It's a definite blue, not a blue. We know your hair wasn't blue, and you gotta touch that metal stick there. Was your hair and so just imagine like we went to many spaces tonight imagine yeah. doing this for hours on end waiting for something to happen that's normally yeah. how it, a full investigation would yeah, go. Exactly. You're in one spot yeah. for like eight hours. Oh, well, you gotta be, yeah. What's fortunate for me is I'm in the same spots seven nights a week. So you're gonna hit something. Always. Yeah, yeah exactly. And again, it's not like they don't know I'm coming. I get my name that shows up all the time. In this location, it's one of three Nicks. That's the weird thing. Because my name will show up here often. But there's three of us here. Wow. And a small temperature drop. It's only like 0.3. It's cold. It's cold. Hearing yeah. anything? More static. Yeah. It's just like... Yeah, it's like fast. Like the words. It's moving faster? I mean, I don't know. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've actually seen that happen yeah. here before. Like the static's faster? Like... Yeah, like it'll pick up. Like for some odd reason at this yeah. base, it will pick up and Ooh. move it quicker. video did you take? <laughs> Was it all pictures? No, not much. Oh. Yeah. Come on, Ann. Give us something. What's your hair color, Ann? Come on. Your hair color, your father's name, your mother's name. Yeah, the key to this guy when you're walking around with it is try to be as steady as possible. So like me jostling it around is just going to give me a bunch of colors. Yeah. So it's always about trying to be as calm as possible. Try to keep your hands level. Every time it does things like that, you want to always reset it to verify that it wasn't your motion. Like there's a lot that goes into this guy. When you don't have gloves on, it's a lot easier to do. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing. I hate to say it, but our most active spot was the one that was that first alley where he had the bend. And then I had something yeah. else come up. And that February 17th, I need to know what the hell that is. That's going to drive me nuts until I research it. The date you gave us. Mm -hmm. Like, I love when I get new stuff to look up and I don't know it off the top of my head because I'm like, ooh, new, new stuff to learn. <laughs> All right, let's head back over okay. to the wall. Kind of see if we get anything out of this guy.
streets are normal for here. Rich. Yeah, they're a whole lot of nothing. What's funny was this device here last night, it wouldn't stop blinking. It was on fire. I mean, it was just going nuts. We, we couldn't even tell what color it was stopping on. It was just moving all over the place. All right, I'm gonna call it because there's really not much going on and he's not hearing much. Okay. Like he just struggled with it, which is okay. Like yeah. that's that's a common thing. So don't think like, oh my God, I did a crappy job. It's, again, you've never done this before. So when I go through it in the morning, that's when the surprises normally come. Now, when I give you guys your data in the morning, I'm usually pretty quick with them um, of getting it back to you. Um, with a small set of data like this, I still spot check everything for about an hour and a half to two hours, you know, put, you know, cause I'm not gonna go through all of it for you. That's half the fun of why people come to see me. Um, but I'm going to always leave links to be able to verify all that information. And then it's up to you to whatever else you find. So yeah. <laughs> uh, let me get you the answer, by the way. Not to mention, we already knew Aunt Bonnie's hair color was red. But let me show you what she actually looked like. And then I'll get you the answers to the measly questions we were trying to get the answers to. So this is one of the few pictures you can find of Anne with a shirt on. Because she used to bare a breast to show men that they were just killed by a woman. Mm -hmm. So again, very, and I get a lot of teenage boys. I don't need angry parents coming at me afterwards. Um, the names of her parents were William Cormack, Mary Brennan. So you guys weren't actually expecting a secondary Mary because we had Mary Reed. Again, it's one of those, it wasn't a subliminal trick, but I was like, oh, that's a great question because now I know they're not expecting it. So William and Mary were the names we were looking for there. Calico Jack, as far as what he looked like, because everybody wants to see what they based Johnny Depp from, mm -hmm. this is the guy. This guy, the reason why they call him Calico Jack was because of the jackets he wore. They came from the British captains that he killed. Textiles were very important to him because his father was a tailor. So Calico Jack, fancy jacket. That's where the name comes from. The name of his ship was called the Kingston. I don't always expect the word Kingston to come through on a radio station, but the word King would actually suffice in this location based on trying to match technology with the olden names that we're looking for. Um, the fact that he heard the name Anne was kind of getting me hopeful that we were going to find more. But again, we don't know what he missed. So we're going to see what they come up with when I'm going through your data um, and like researching through that. Um, any other major questions about piracy? Because I could probably answer them for you. I've read more books than I wanted to, like I said. So if you have questions about pirates, like I actually just ordered five more to read. Because there's more, <laughs> more, more Blackbeard stuff to read. Always. Blackbeard never goes away. He's on everything. So, yeah, turn your volume down and pull out your earbuds. Let me stop your...